be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. <laughs> well, hello, everybody. Dennis Gebhardt here with Guru Nation, welcoming you to our next episode of Rabbit Trails. Uh, we're real excited today. We got some great information to share with you. And of course, as always, my partner in crime here, Max Masano. Good morning, Max. How are you, my friend? Good morning, Dennis. I'm doing great. How about yourself? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, I know you're in Boston, so the weather in Boston is probably pretty snowy right now, right? Yep. We actually got a little bit of snow this morning. Yeah. Well, California, our snow comes in liquid form <laughs> or you have to drive to our ski slopes. So um, we, we're having a pretty dry winter. So today is a real gray day for us outside and um, overcast and all that good stuff. So it's a great day to be indoors and we'll make the sunshine here. <laughs> Shed and some light on things. We'll shed some light. Boy, are we going to shed some light today, I'll tell you. So I hope you all are enjoying our program. Uh, in this program, if it's your first time watching it, one of the things that we try to do is to bring to light some of the subjects that, you know, that sometimes we don't talk about in this industry, or we try to help give clarity on some subjects that create confusion, um, because one of the things about the industry that I love and Max loves is that we, we know that for many of us, color, even though it's the number one service in salons across America today, still the number one color service, the number one service, there's still a lot of confusion about what's actually really happening. And as you've heard us say many times, there's a whole lot of opinion, a lot of speculation, a lot of assumption, and just a spoonful of science. <laughs> and that little spoonful of science, sometimes we use it to build urban legends, or sometimes we stretch it to fit our opinion. And uh, it's just something that we need to be grounded in. I truly believe that if you are grounded in understanding how hair color works, and uh, understanding how it interacts with the hair, which is our canvas, and understanding the hair itself. If you understand the law of color, not necessarily hair color, but understand how and why we see colors the way we do, and you understand the law of hair color and how to formulate, you're pretty well grounded in this industry. The unfortunate thing is that for many of us, we had to discover that after we left beauty school because beauty school is pretty much a, a one trick pony. You know, it's like everybody learns the same thing because they're teaching you to pass an exam. And so you don't want to waver on opinion. And that's why they really, in most schools across the country today, they use one textbook and that textbook has, you know, it's, it's used universally. And uh, some of the information, even in that textbook, is not relevant to the world of hair color today because they've chosen not to change much of it. That's why if you're a student and you're watching this, you're probably hearing different information than you heard in your beauty school theory class. And so um, we do not apologize for that. You know, uh, as we said before, we are not here to contradict or to condescend but we are here to provoke, you know, our job is to provoke your thought process. And if we push you to the moment of thinking about it and actually testing what we say and making those discoveries yourself, then you will own the information and then you'll be on your way to what we think is discovering your own personal genius. So, uh, Max, how do you feel about that? Boy, I ran off at the mouth here this morning to start our, our little session, didn't I? Holy well, mackerel. Well, that's because never... I've had too many cups of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> you're never at a loss for words, my friend. Um, and yeah, just you know, reiterating the mission here. We're here to provoke your thoughts. We're here to shed some light on some things. And, you know, and like, let's talk about it. You yeah, know? yeah. And the reason we call this Rabbit Trails is because sometimes we're, we go down rabbit trails, you know? And so uh, kind of gives us kind of nice thing to think about. It's like, 
you know, you, you'll have a conversation and somebody will take you off subject or, you know, do all that. So we just really wanted to put it out there that it's all about a rabbit trail. So sometimes we'll actually call each other out. We'll say, hey, 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 that's another rabbit trail. We're on this one. Yeah. Stay on this one right now. And uh, I'm one of the biggest offenders. So I try not to, to do too much. So let's start it off by talking about some real science. Mm-hmm. What do you think, huh? Yes, I'm down. Let's talk about the word calibrated. Ooh, oh, doesn't that, that sound that powerful? Monster. That, that <laughs> word rears its ugly head on social media and oh in the forums at least, I don't know, I want to say at least once a week. But it's, yeah. it, it definitely has uh, times where it trends, you know, like... Yes. Yes. Well, it's that one of those ugly monsters that raise their ugly heads every so often. And um, here's the funny thing. And I, and Max, I think we talked about this before we started our session today is that you researched the definition of calibrated mm-hmm. just as I did. Mm-hmm. And, and we found out that calibrated is, you know, holding something to a measurement to a finite measurement. That's what calibrated is. And um, that's really basically all it is, yeah, right? But yet some people and some manufacturers use it as a point of difference when they're talking about their brand of color. Sure. When they'll say, ah, oh, well, my brand is calibrated. That brand isn't. I don't know whether that brand is or not, but we're calibrated. Mm-hmm. And so calibrated sounds really special to us. It's like we are pH balanced, right? Those are both two very general statements. Yeah. You know, you're pH balanced. Okay, at what pH? You're, you're calibrated. What does that mean when you say calibrated? Right. Now, we know it means that in the color laboratory, when you build a color brand, you are measuring it with a device that has certain specifications. And so every hair color that I've ever been involved with, and of course, I've only been around for a couple of decades, and they all calibrate their colors. You, you can't make a hair color without calibrating it. And the most universal tool that is used is something called the Hunter Spectrophotometer. Say that with me. Hunter, Hunter Spectrophotometer. Spectro-photometer. Now, Google it, and you will actually see pictures of it. And it is a device that is used to measure light transference and light absorption. That's what it does. Mm-hmm. So when I was working in the laboratory, We would take our color, we'd swatch it out. We'd put it in the Hunter spec. That's what we called it. And it would tell us a reading. It would give us a reading and tell us about where we were, where we were between black hair and blonde hair, whether we had dark Brown, whether we had a medium Brown, whether we had a dark blonde, it gave us that kind of a reading. In fact, here are a couple of specs that you can look at. And you can see that it's giving us a visual measurement. These are two different brands of color. And you'll see that the measurements are different. And they're both the same level. Am I right, Max? Yeah. I mean, it's a whole, like in these visuals, it's uh, all the shades in a color brand. And they're plotted out from dark to light and warm to cool, right? Right. But the, the whole point is, is that this it's calibrated. It's been plotted. And yeah, on some of them, I think like the five is darker than the four, you know, but the, the true essence of the word calibrate just means to give a a measurement too. exactly. Now what happened in the past uh, was some marketing person, you know, took this word calibrated and almost, you know, turned it around into a point of difference, Mm -hmm. you know, and applied it to uh, 
a hair color line. And right. I think that the, the thing that we really need to sort of keep in mind is, you know, you can make, anyone can make a hair color, right? So mm -hmm. let's, let's just take a level six. So the industry has a benchmark, you yes. know, of what they say a level six is. What it should be. What it and, should and, be. And, it, yes. and, it, and there's a range. Yes. You know, so they, they kind of start with the center of the range. Mm -hmm. But let's say you want your six to cover more. So you make it a little deeper than the center of that benchmark. You don't necessarily bring it down into what a five should be but it could look closer to a five visually, you know, right. and that's, and that's the whole thing. It's like, uh, if it, if it was just as simple as all sixes were sixes, you could convert from color line to color line and you wouldn't need to swatch anything out to, right. to see, you know, what you're working with, but you know, every color line is different because they were made to somebody's specifications. Right. You here, know? Here, the, right at that point, is what it's important to say, because you used a couple of words, mm -hmm. descriptors, that people misinterpret. You said one might be darker than the other. And since we were all trained on a vertical line, that's the way we would learn levels, we think that you're adding more pigment to make it darker. You're not. You're actually changing the dye intermediates that you're right. using. So remember, this is chemistry, even though on the surface, we are artistes. Okay. <laughs> We're painting a canvas. No, you're not. <laughs> you're actually taking a chemical solution, color, and you're applying it to a chemical structure, hair, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, and sulfur. And you are changing that structure both physically because you're breaking it down to make room for the artificial dye intermediate. And you're changing it chemically because once those dye intermediates join with the structure of the hair, the chemical structure of the hair has now become different. The result is a visual result, which we call color. Yeah. So a company may make their level six with a chemical composition that creates, that, ha that, that has more blue dye intermediates in it. Another company may make their level six with a combination that has more medium brown or light brown dye intermediates in it. One's going to look darker, darker is the scripture we use, but they're both the same level. They're both the same level. So, so there's some variables in there that we never talk about that we just simply accept as being a general term. Right. And I think what's important is to understand that when we are taught calibration as a point of difference, and this is just my opinion, and what I've heard from educators, from companies, and what I've heard from hairdressers is, cal remember, we send in words, we receive in pictures. So when you say calibrated, that means they're like an equal distance apart. That means if I mix my level nine and level four in equal parts, I'll get something smack dab in the middle. Now, those who know the mathematical programming for the hunter spec understand that that's not the way hair color is made hair color is not made it is not consistent because as hair gets as color gets lighter when i'm making a brand of color i have to change the ratio of dye intermediates and the choice of dye intermediate i don't make a level eight out of a level seven by dilution I make a level eight by putting in a different set of dye intermediates. And so I think that's where we get calibration used in a place where people say, well, my color is calibrated. My, it's like saying my color has a brain. And that's also if 
you know, you have someone who's creating the color line who really maps everything out properly. Like I've worked with some color lines where the eight actually visually looks lighter than the nine, you know? Yes. Just because of someone made that decision. Yes. You know, and like you've even told me the story about how you worked with a brand of hair color oh. where no one actually looked at the shades and then you swatched them out and it was like all askew. It right? was all over the place. Yeah. yeah. It was all over the place. And they had already been, those had already been okayed. Right. They were going to build them, you know. The, but they, they were calibrated. They were calibrated. They weren't calibrated correctly, in my right. opinion. Okay. We changed that but they were calibrated. So calibrated is really pretty general. Yeah. And so don't get hung up in these words that we use in this business to influence you to buy my product. Right. You know, because <laughs> it's, it's just crazy. We, it's like showmanship, you know, the more showmanship we have, the more craziness that we do, you know, we really are drawn to that. Hairdressers, we are, we're emotional people. You know, most of us got into this business because of we love working with our hands and we love making people happy. Yeah. I mean, that's really the reason we started doing this. And, and so we love the emotion. We love the magic stories. You know, I mean, I, I just finished one, Max, called on, the, you know, Just the Facts. I just did that video, just posted it on IG and it's on our YouTube channel. So go on and check it out about direct dyes, yeah. you know, about what we think we see is not what is actually happening. So calibration, I just wanted to get that out and kind yeah. of hopefully find resolution for people so that they feel better about that when they're, they're given these stories that are, they're not, completely false right <laughs> they're skewed slightly to control your opinion to control your your belief system so that you say oh wow okay that's cool so anything we missed on calibration oh wait I mean, what go ahead well no that's next go ahead and i was just gonna say you know and the moral of the story really is when in doubt swatch it out Amen. That's always going to give you your best read of anything you're working with. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and, you know, it doesn't really cost much to mix up a few grams of color, a few grams of developer, and, you know, either whatever you're working with, you know, cotton, a muslin strip, just you're going to see what you're, you're working with. And I can't stress that enough. It's like, yeah, you, you know. You can, you don't need the, you don't necessarily need all the laboratory devices. You can see it for yourself. It's really yeah. quite evident. Um, and like Max says, I totally agree with him. When in doubt, swatch it out. Um, swatching can answer a lot of questions for you. We should and get that put on a t shirt. When in doubt, swatch it out. We're going to have to look at that. that that's yeah. a pretty good idea. <laughs> that's a pretty in good the, idea. In the Guru Nation swag shop. Yeah, absolutely. So, Let's, now that we talked about calibration, let's talk about the level system. So here's just <laughs> my spin on the level system. Because I find it's confusing as well. Yeah. Um, first of all, I'll just go ahead and just throw this out there. The level system is not vertical. Level system is actually horizontal. <laughs> So when I make hair color, when I make hair color, I make lighter shades, not by diluting what I have. I make lighter shades by putting lighter, lighter colors in the formula. So a level eight has a, a higher percentage of dye intermediates that create yellow tones, blonde tones in the hair. A, a level five have a higher percentage of dye intermediates that create brown tones and tones with depth. So it's really horizontal, even though we learned it vertically. And <clears throat> along with learning it vertically, most of us learned 
a level system, period. And so you've heard Max and I say this, in fact, I think in a, one of our other rabbit trails that we did is that a level is not a finite line. A level is a range. So back in the day, which actually is still accurate today, is that there are really sub levels, sub levels within a level, but we call them shades. A shade and a level are different. A shade would be like climbing up a ladder where the rungs of the ladder are all sequentially 10 inches apart. Boom, 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 boom. A level would be like climbing up the same ladder where some of those rungs are 10 inches apart. Some of them <clears throat> are 15 inches apart. That's the difference. So when we talk about that, we know in each level, we try to keep it simple. We know that there is a, a light side of that level and there's a dark side of that level, which has created controversy in our industry. Because some of you watching this, you're from the old school and you were taught universal law of lift. Now, because we have an educator that is now on YouTube and on Facebook who is really promoting universal law of lift. And there's two generations, at least of you out there that have never heard this. You, all, you were raised on volume for lift. Now along comes this educator that tells you if you're a level five and you want to be a level seven, you use a level nine. And you were always taught if I'm a level five and I want to use a level seven, I use 20 volume and a level seven. They're both right. They both get you to a level seven. One universal law of lift gives you to the light side of that level seven. One volume for lift gives you to the dark side of that level seven. So neither one of them are wrong. They both work, but it's important for us to think about what do you want your visual result to be? For me, if I'm trying to control warmth, that's what hair contributes. And we know that the hair, whatever the hair contributes at the end of the process will be 50% of your result. Because we're not covering anything up we're merging things together. So if I want to control warmth, I probably would be used volume for lift because I know that I'd end up on the dark side, which is gonna mean the hair is gonna contribute less warmth. It also means I'm gonna have more pigment in my color and I have a better chance of refining that. If I didn't care about the warmth, if I want, or even if I wanted a brighter color, I'd use universal law of lift because using universal law of lift would get me to the light side of that level seven, which would give me more reflect in my finish. I could not, I couldn't make it cool. Could not make it cool. I don't have enough pigment in my color. Goes back to that diintermediates, on the spectrophotometer, there is less pigment as colors get lighter, but that's where I don't think people really learn shades. Do you, Max? Mm -mm. And I think it's just like, it comes down to a question. Are you lightening for control or are you lightening for brightness and more tonal clarity? And that can kind of help you sort of discern, you know, which way they're both yeah. right. You know, yeah. it's just like, what, what do you want to end up with at the end of the day? Right. You know, if I, you're not, if you're not concerned about a lot of warmth and you know, like your client, I mean, what client says that they love gold, you know, but <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, yeah you can, they love gold around their neck, but not on the top of their head. Yeah, you, exactly. You know. Well, you know, you're right. There's more of a thought process, I think, than, than some of us want to admit. 
who said, look, I don't want to think about it. I just want to put it on the head and let it happen. And, and that's fine. For a lot of people who do that their entire career. But if you're really concerned with the result you're trying to create and you're really trying to achieve your target, you know, you, you have to put in some thought, you know, you know, it's like people are always asking for directions. I see that on social media. They always say, uh, my client is this level. She wants to be that level. What level should I use? Why are you asking me? Why, why are you asking me? Mm-hmm. But you know what? <laughs> A simple question like that, all of these different opinions about, well, I'd use this, I'd use that, I'd use this. And there's too many variables to make a really accurate assessment of what you recommend that the person use. So I think understanding if that's, that's important sometimes is that you know there are people who believe a universal law of lift. And so they will tell you that if you use a level seven with 20 volume on a level five, you don't make a level seven, you actually make a level six. Well, you don't actually make a level six. (laughs) You have some alkalinity in that color. You make somewhere between a level six and a level seven. I call it the dark side of a level seven. You know, so it's all in how you think about it. But I use both forms depending on what I'm trying to achieve. So at least understanding that you have a choice that you have a choice is real, real important. It's the same thing with level nine. Many people get to the light side of a level nine and they call that pale yellow. That's not pale yellow. You know, pale yellow is, is the inside of a banana peel. Pale yellow is not scrambled eggs. Right. Those are two different levels. So, that's my spin on shades. What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, I completely agree. And again, it's just, uh, you know, it's like a matter of being able to utilize all these things as tools in your hair colorist tool belt, so right. to speak. And, um, you know, they're all methods to get you somewhere. You, but it's deciding where you want to arrive, how you want to get there. Right. And, you know what you want to end up with. Yeah. I think it's good to learn to use a lot of different tools. Yes. Um, it makes you more um, effective yeah. in different hair color situations. You know, I've always said the thing that would burn me out in this business more than anything else would be redundancy. Like same thing over, 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 you know, that would just burn me out. And, and I yet I see new hairdressers who've been in the business three years and goes, I'm burnt out. Yeah. How can you burn out after three years? After three years, you're not even at the point that they teach you in business school to where you're actually in control of your business. Right. You know, business school 101, expect, pl- make a five-year plan. Hairdressing 101, it's going to be probably five years before you really have control of your your business and you're generating a really great, great income in this business. You can do that, you know, but in hair color, it's learning to use all the tools and not just being having one tool. It's like having, you know, one tool to to do anything. It's not going to work. I mean, Think about it. I mean, if I'm hanging pictures in my house and, you know, I have a nail, I'm going into the wall. I can hammer that nail in. If I don't have a hammer, I can hammer it in with the end of a screwdriver. But is it the most optimum tool? No, it's not. <laughs> so, so, you know, make those choices. I have opaque colors. I have translucent colors. You know, I use universal law of lift. I use volume for lift. You know, all of those kinds of things help us just become better at coloring hair. Yeah, they're tools, right? Yeah. You you want lots of tools in your toolbox? You know? I love lots of tools. Yeah. You know, you know, I always say to people, it's really funny because the things they hear me uh, talk about online and on our program here on YouTube is they, they you seem, you would probably seem to think I'm very structured. I am, but. If you were in the salon working with me, 
Do I formulate outside the box? I do, but I understand the principles of color, not rules. Remember that rules are written for manu by manufacturers. They are written so that you can get a 99% success rate out of using their product. I operate under principles in which all colors fall under the principles of color. And when you do that, when you understand that, it's important and it will make you more successful. It's like on our broadcast this morning, Eric and I did an IG broadcast. I, I know you were on for a little while. I don't know whether you were there all the time, but you know, we talked about this, you know, when you wipe the bleach off uh, out of your foils, don't add water because water has a, is H2O. And it's very similar to H2O2. No, it's not. And they tell you water will active, reactivate the bleach. No, it won't. There's a better way than using water, but if you're wiping a foil off, that means you're gonna spray it with water, you're gonna wipe it down with a towel, you're not gonna reactivate that bleach because that bleach has a certain window of time in which it's actually active. You can't change that. Nobody can. Once you start a chemical action, it's going. And so when you do that, People think that water activates bleach. Water doesn't activate bleach. It actually takes on the pH of the bleach. We proved that in videos. You know, so bleach has a certain working cycle. It works for a certain amount of time at peak performance. And then it starts to go slowly downhill. It's like when we teach color classes, we teach that powdered lightener stays alive for two hour, up to two hours, so long as it's moist, as it's wet. Now, I didn't say that it will lift the hair five levels when you use it an hour and <coughs> 50 minutes into the process, but it's actually working. So the whole idea is that we, we take these chemical scientific stories and we stretch them to fit an opinion. And that's where we run into problems. You know, it's just like the classic one is with hair color. If 35 minutes is good, I'm gonna leave it on for 45 minutes. So if I'm depositing for coverage of gray hair and I extend my, my processing time, but an, extra, an additional 10 or 15 minutes, I will probably get a little additional pigment deposit. Not a lot, but a little. If I'm using a high lift tent or even a blonde shade, level nine or level 10, and I extend it beyond the processing time, because there's such a small amount of pigment in those lighter shades of color, Many times, in high lift tent especially, it will begin to cannibalize itself because here's the rule or the principle in oxidation processes. The process of, the process of oxidation is always extended beyond the moment of maximum dye development. The process of oxidation is always extending beyond the moment of maximum dye development. That means that we always have extra oxidation going on in a color process. And, and that's an advantage in color correction. But that's one of those principles that you, you can use. So again, be weary when people take science and they stretch it to fit an opinion or a thought or an assumption. You know, that, that to me is very, very important because we take it as a rule. You know, they say, if someone says, well, I always do this because this is what I feel. Oh, well, then we all must do it. Instead of going, but why? What's the benefit? You know, and, and 
that's what blows me away <laughs> in our business because we, we have so many things. You have, to, you have to weed your way through some of this stuff to find truth, to find something that you can actually believe in and, and count on it being consistent all of the time. I mean, some of the words we use, it's, it's like someone says, um, blondes always reject ash. Have you heard that one? That's a new one, actually. Yeah. Blondes always reject ash. And you say, well, what does that mean? That I can't make an ash blonde? Well, here's where that came from. If I have a blonde, that hair's lighter. It's got warmth. All right. And I put ash on it. I'm putting contradicting tones together. Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. So after a couple of shampoos, with most toning products, after a couple of shampoos, you start to see a breakdown of that color, right? Yeah. But because it's ash toner on warm hair, it looks more dramatic because you can notice it more. Right. So people assume that means that blonde hair won't take ash. No, it means that all toners break away. All toners break down. All toners will fade. No toner never fades. There's no such thing. Right. All color fades. All color fades. News, news so, flash. So a warm toner fades just as much as a cool toner, but you don't notice the warm toner fading because you put it on a warm canvas. Right. So the contrast is, is not the same. Right. And Less so, of a dramatic difference. Right. And so we make a rule. And so everybody goes, well, ha. right. You know, well, it's kind of like, uh, <laughs> or when someone says it drives me nuts, uh, when they're like, oh, she's got box color on her hair. Like oh, it's, yeah. Dangerous. And, and I'm like, yeah, so, well, it's box color. <laughs> and, you know, it's like, it's the same thing that we're putting on their hair. The only difference is a little bit of the thinking has been taken out, you know, so that it might have a little bit more ammonia, but not really enough to make a huge difference. It does everything that our professional hair color does, you know, when you mix it together and you put it on the hair. Right. You know? Max, you work for more than one company, correct? Mm -hmm. I have two. How many people do you think would be surprised to realize that some of those major professional companies run all day long producing their wonderful color brand? And at 5 p.m., the alarm rings, they wash down all the equipment, sanitize it, and they put new color in, not their brand. <laughs> they put a new color in and they run and most of the time it's boxed hair color and mm -hmm. they run that that's the night shift. They yeah. run that through. Some of them don't even, they're not even secretive about it. Some of no. them run it all at the same time. And, you know, um, I was really fortunate to work for a brand that also had, had a professional division and a consumer division. Me too. And yeah. one of the most uh, successful commercial hair color launches was uh, a product that began with an F and ended with an area. Uh-huh. And this professional brand created the professional version of the, the same product. And it's like, you know, like I, I would just remember, oh, she's got this product on her hair. Oh, it's this. And, and basically it was, it was a permanent hair color that had some direct dyes in with it, right. which sometimes made it a little difficult to remove on porous hair, but it, it's like, it's really no different than right. anything else, you know, yeah. but it's, it gets this bad rap because yeah. people uh, just. Well, I think that know. company, it was on the 23rd floor, right? Where that was. <laughs> yes. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. I've been there. Uh, I've been there. So 
yeah, it is. We we have to really, I think, understand that the really the magic is in in what we do as hairdressers. Yeah. You know, with all this stuff with COVID, you know, and people said, "Well, I'm going to sell color formulas to my client and all of that." Are you going to do that? I did not. I did not do that. Uh, the reason is because number one, <laughs> I never use one color in a color formula. You know, that doesn't mean I put five colors in the bowl. That means that usually all my colors are pretty much dimensional. Like well, I add depth in one area. I add subtle lightness in another area. I may add some highlights. I may do some balayage or whatever. Um, because I wanted my clients to understand the magic is not in the color. The magic is in our skill as colorists. So the more skilled we become, you know, the better our client retention will be. Yeah. And so people are afraid of them going to the store and using that box. That's why we say, oh, my God, box color is terrible. You know, they have 20% ammonia. Nobody's got 20% ammonia. That's what you clean your floors with. Right. Nobody uses that in hair color. No. <laughs> so it's crazy. It's what but, turns that like just a retouch into a real so, sort of custom curated in salon yes. hair color experience. Absolutely. And that's what we're really trying to do. It's like, you know, yeah, right. you can you can do the just a retouch thing and slap something on. Well, so can they. But exactly. when you start to, you know, like you said, add depth in places, add lightness, and you know, sort of develop these these techniques and placement techniques that can't be duplicated, you right. know, from a home job, you know, that's what makes what you have to offer into a commodity. And I mean, that's what we're really trying to do is just kind of elevate hair color to that level. Exactly. It's an art form. You know, what excites me the most is when a client says to me, do what you think I should have. Yeah. I get so excited because she's allowed me to do what I was trained to do. Yeah. And she trusts you yeah. that you're not going to make her look ugly. Right. <laughs> what makes me nervous is when a client says that to someone and they go, well, but what do you want? I want you to do what you think should look good on me. No, no. But what are you thinking of? What do you, they're looking for directive because they don't have an idea in their head on what they thought would look good on that person in the first place. So that's where, um, you know, we have a huge amount of people that are really wanting to know today. I'm so proud that um, to be part of a group of, of educators who are actually trying to deliver accurate information to empower hairdressers. Yeah. And I'm so excited for the hairdressers who choose to follow what we do and, and follow us and the information because they know that we're trying to help them become better. Cause I really, I always say, you know, I don't care what color you use because it doesn't matter what color you use. And, you know, I've been around a long time. So have you long enough to have tried a lot of them. And actually really, there's not a, a lot of difference. It's just, yeah. some of them, it's just personal taste. What works better for you you know, and, and I totally understand that. That's why one of the biggest problems I have with people is when they would come up when I was teaching for a manufacturer and they say, well, you know, I love this red shade over here in this company. How do I make it in this brand? Right. And I would go, well, why would I teach you how to make it? If you like that red shade, go buy that red shade and use that right. on your red clients. You know, I mean, why make it hard for someone? I mean, I can create a way for them to formulate it, but in some cases you can't. I mean, look, you've been to the Formulation Foundation program. Mm -hmm. A couple and, of times. And yes, you have. And I talk a lot in that program about my favorite additive to add into my colors to control warmth. And it is not green and it is not blue and it is not violet, and it is not blue-violet, it is gray. Mm -hmm. And people go, well, we don't have any gray shades. And I go, yeah, you do. Well, how would I know that? 
And I say, dye them out. And you're shocked at how many people go, I didn't even realize that these are gray. Yeah. That means that you don't know your color, you know, and it's your responsibility to learn about the color that you're using. You know, I don't believe everything that my manufacturer tells me. You know, for those of you that are using one of my surrogate children, Shade DQ, you go off what you're taught on the page, right? The T series is made up this, this, and this. How do you know that? Because <laughs> let me tell you, I'll just say it. Do some dye outs. And that's a great hair color. It's amazing after it was launched. And we launched in 1988. And today in 2021, it is still the number one worldwide demi-permanent hair color. Number one, that's a long life. Mm -hmm. However, there are some things about it that if you're not doing dye outs, you will not know. And that's why people still struggle with that. And they should, you know, that was created originally to be an easy color to work with. Yeah. Now they've, they've tinkered with it. You know, they've tinkered with it a little bit. They've added more colors. They, you notice how it continually grows with more shades and more shades. So they keep filling in those slots. They're not always doing that to make it easier for you. They're doing it because they want you to buy another bottle of color. I mean, and that's the thing that you always need to keep in mind with manufacturers. They, they are sales focused. I mean, absolutely. What, what do color manufacturers want to sell more color? Right. I mean, it's kind of like, and we'll save this for a whole nother rabbit trails, <laughs> but you know, the double N series. Oh yeah. You know? yeah. And I'll just leave it right yeah. there. Right. Just, we'll just put a pin in that. We'll put a pin bring, in that. Yes. Bring it, bring it to the next uh, thing. Cause again. Yeah. So it's, <clears throat> it is about mastering your craft. And the only way you can do that is to be diligent about not only just working in the salon, but practicing at home and testing things at home. That's where you will learn. I think one of our friends uh, one of the things that she said, and totally, I believe that, I, you know, I used to say, you know, tell me this, this sentence, knowledge is, and then people would always say power. And I said, well, there's one word missing from that statement. Applied knowledge mm -hmm. is power. Because you can absorb all the information, but if you're not applying it, not only to test it, to make sure you were told the truth, then Again, you're, you're still back in the same place again. Yeah. So, you know, test it yourself. Use what you learn. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And when in doubt, swatch it out. Amen. <laughs> I love that one. That's a great saying. We're going to yeah. have to get that done for a T-shirt. All right. So we are now, I think we're at the end of this one. Yeah. This one's run long. So we yeah. have this other segment, this other piece we want to talk about. We should probably cover it next time. So, look, I hope you guys find this beneficial. If you're watching us on YouTube, thank you so much. Uh, our subscription has grown since we started doing rabbit trails, and we really, truly appreciate that. Mm -hmm. We also appreciate all the positive comments and positive feedback that we're getting about the program that we're doing. Uh, so you can subscribe right here. If you're watching us on YouTube, right here underneath our screen, you can subscribe to us. That way you'll get notified anytime we post a new rabbit trials and we're trying to be very consistent in doing this series um second of all you can reach us on instagram if you choose you can reach max at max m hair uh on instagram you could reach me at real captain color we also invite you to visit our website which is www.gurunation.net blah, 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 <clears throat> and uh, take a look at our website. We have online videos that you can download and watch for your own personal education at any time, 24 seven. We also have classes that we do in our virtual classroom. We have one coming up this Monday. That's the day after tomorrow 
called The Science of It. It is a five-hour online program totally devoted to the science of hair color. So uh, it's rich for those people that really want to understand what's in hair color, how color works, how it interacts with the hair. So it's a great program. We also offer the formulation found the formulation series or foundation series of programs. Formulation Foundation. The next uh, formulation foundation is going to be, uh, I think it is uh, sometime in February. It's just a couple weeks away. And Formulation Mashup is coming up in the next week or so. So go online, check out our virtual classroom. And then drop into our gallery where you can see some of pictures of some of the classes we've done. We've got some small short videos there that kind of gives you what it's like to be in a Guru Nation educational program. And remember in every class, usually there's a small video screen if you click on details and it will give you a little bit of an update as far as content and things like that goes. So you know what to expect when you sign up for those classes. So that is the, uh, the approach and uh, that is the, the whole story here we have to close this one off max it has been fun my friend dennis always a pleasure thank you for joining me today you bet and, uh as far as max and i are concerned we'll see you on the next rabbit trails program until then from my heart to yours i'm captain color i'm out max thank you my friend take care thanks dennis see, see you, you later all. be safe bye-bye